In this video, I'm looking at the hydrolysis of polyamides. So just a quick reminder of what we mean by hydrolysis. That's the chemical breakdown of a substance by reaction with water. So essentially, water can break down polyamides, but this is very slow, so the hydrolysis tends to be done with hot aqueous acid or hot aqueous alkali. And I just want to stress this point, we must reference water because hydrolysis is essentially to do with water and so we must mention the word aqueous acid, aqueous alkali. So we'll start by looking at the acid hydrolysis of this polyamide. You can see the amide group here and it's this CN bond that's going to be broken by the water. So if we think what's going to form on the left hand side of this bond, these two C double bond O's are going to turn into carboxylic acid groups. So I've drawn up the structure of the carboxylic acid that forms and in green there all I'm doing is keeping account of how the atoms are changing and that's going to help us write the balanced equation at the end. So we've gone up by two OHs so I'll come back to that in a moment. So the right hand part of the polymer once this bond breaks, well this initially would become a diamine. So I'll just quickly draw that up. So there it is there on the right and you can see in green 2 times H because we've put an H on here and an H on there. So if we just check this, we've got 2 OHs and 2 H's so that's essentially two water molecules have been involved per repeat unit. And the last thing we need to do is we need to factor in the condition, so the type of hydrolysis. So this is acid hydrolysis. I'm not specifying which acid it is. Is it hydrochloric? Is it sulfuric? It's just H+. So could they interact with either of our products? Well, the answer is yes. H pluses can be accepted by the lone pair on these nitrogens. So instead of just get, getting NH2 groups here, we'll actually have NH3 groups, but remember we need the plus on the nitrogen. So we've put another two H pluses into the atom count. So we'll just finish by turning it into a balanced chemical equation because it's not balanced at the moment. And that's because we haven't just got one repeat unit here, we've got N of them. And so therefore, N repeats will require two N water molecules, two N H plus ions, and that will create N moles of this dicarboxylic acid and N moles of this diammonium ion. So we're just going to take the exact same polyamide now and we're going to do the alkaline hydrolysis. So all I've done is I've changed the conditions now to hot aqueous hydroxide ions. So again the water, the aqueous, will break the same bond, the C single bond N, and we're going to draw up the two separate um, parts to the polymer. So exactly the same as with acid hydrolysis, the water molecule is going to break this C single bond N and generate initially the same two products. Now we factor in the fact that it's base hydrolysis. These hydroxide ions have base properties and so therefore they can accept protons. So where will these protons come from? They will come from here and so they will be donated by this acid and the base will accept them. So we don't have this as our final product, but we have this ion here. So let's look at the balanced equation for this now. So what's changed? Well, going from here to here, we've got O minus and the same on this end. And we've gone up H and H. So essentially we've gone up by two OH minuses. But just like before, remember these two hydroxide ions is what's required per repeat unit. 
we've got n repeat units so we're going to need 2 n moles of hydroxide ions and that will generate n moles of this ion here and n moles of the diamine and just to finish if it was specified as being say sodium hydroxide then you would have 2 n moles of NaOH in the equation and here you would have Na plus ions either side of the O minus. So essentially what you're making is what's called a dicarboxylate salt.